Hi, I'm Joth Hunt. I'm one of the regional team for Southern Counties Baptist Association. And it's a real privilege for me to bring the greetings of the team from Colin and Dave and Claire, from Amy, from Alison and from Andrea. We really hope that you had a really good Easter. Strange that it might have been. But of course, this would have been an Easter that we will never forget. And our prayer is that it has been precious and that God has spoken to you in some kind of special way during these last few days. We plan to continue to do these videos, but also to send out communication as and when it's required. And hopefully they are useful for you. Do check these out and you can look at the previous ones if you haven't done so already. These are also placed on our podcast, SCBA Pod, so you can download those as well and listen to those if you prefer to do that. I'd like to this opportunity to share from some verses taken from uh, Luke 24. This is one of my favourite resurrection passages. I think it's because it's about journeying. You get these two disciples that are walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus. I love journeys, I love travelling, I love going from one place to another and therefore I think I'm drawn into this passage very, very easily and very, very quickly. And what I want to do is just look at this passage and just draw out three things that happens when Jesus comes and journeys with them in this situation. In a time of uncertainty, in a time of confusion, in a time of sadness, in a time when they were downcast, that's how Luke describes it to us. In such a time... What does Jesus do? And the first thing Jesus does, well, I just love this. What Jesus does is he comes alongside them and he asks them a question. A stranger comes in and asks them a question and the question is bizarre. The question is this, what are you talking about? Jesus asks them. What things? Tell me. When we're in a place of difficulty, when we're in a place when we are confused, uh, we're uncertain, uh, we don't know what the future entails. Jesus is interested in how we feel. Jesus is interested in what we think. Jesus is interested in the things that are deep down inside us. Even though we may be confused, he's interested in that. And he asks the question to us, I think, what are you talking about? And in these moments, right across the world, we are all talking about the same thing, coronavirus. And we're talking about it from a place of confusion, of sadness, of disillusionment, of lacking in knowledge and truth. And there is fear as well in the mix of all that. Jesus asks us, what are you talking about? What concerns you? What are your struggles in this moment? And he gives us the opportunity to share that and to talk about it. The second thing that I draw out of this passage, that as Jesus listens to their fears, he also corrects their foolishness. And I don't know if you noticed in the passage, but Jesus responds to them by saying, how foolish you are. Sounds a bit rude, doesn't it? And particularly from a British culture. And what Jesus is actually saying, he's not calling them an idiot. He's he's just saying, you've missed the point. You've misunderstood the situation and the circumstances. Things are about to change for these disciples, but they have not yet understood and fully believed in what has been shown to them. And so Jesus then unpacks the whole of scripture and wouldn't you love to have been part of that journey with those disciples? Walking along with them, hearing Jesus unpack scripture from Moses all the way through to the prophets about how the Messiah had to come and how the Messiah had to suffer and how the Messiah had to die on behalf of you and I. I was uh, reminded of those verses that are in Isaiah 55, Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9, where it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, 
and my thoughts than your thoughts. Do you know, as, as followers of Jesus, we need to learn to see it how God sees it. To recognise that so often God's ways are so different to our ways. These disciples, in their confusion and sadness, thinking everything was lost, actually had to discover that everything had been gained in the life and death of Jesus Christ. And so often we fall into that trap. When we see circumstances, situations, find ourselves in a particular situation we were struggling with and we don't understand and we begin to put man's perspective into it rather than listening to Jesus' perspective. We run after man's foolishness rather than the wisdom of the Son of God. And in this time of coronavirus, our prayer is, Lord speak, help us to hear not men's wisdom, but your, actually not men's foolishness, but your wisdom, your truth, your understanding. May we see it from heaven's perspective. And the third thing that I think is really important or that I want to draw out of this passage is that at the end what we discover is that Jesus redirects their footsteps. Jesus listens to their fears, Jesus corrects their foolishness, but then he redirects their footsteps. They walk with Jesus, they encounter Jesus, they eat with Jesus, and Jesus redirects them. They got up and returned to Jerusalem. When we meet with Jesus, everything changes. He redirects us. He points us in a new direction. A new direction that speaks of the risen Lord Jesus. And whatever happens within this crisis, whatever happens within this disease, we know that he is alive and that he is the life for all people. And so we are redirected. Our, our path has changed. We are back to Jerusalem. We are moving away from the comfort of Emmaus. And, and I guess they were running away to Emmaus. I, 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 I guess that. It was a safe place. It was, I guess, their home. Jerusalem certainly wasn't the safe place. Jerusalem was the dangerous place. Jerusalem was a place of risk. But they move. Jesus redirects their paths from a place of safety to a place of risk. A place where they couldn't witness about the risen Lord Jesus. To a place where they will speak into the lives of others and tell others that Jesus is alive. So as we move from this Easter period towards Pentecost... Let me encourage you to journey with Jesus. Allow Jesus to come alongside you. Allow Jesus to ask the question, what are you talking about? And share with him your confusion, your uncertainties, your fear, your misunderstanding, whatever it is, share with him your feelings and thoughts about the situation. And then allow him to take you from that place of foolishness into that place of divine wisdom that comes through the through the words of Jesus himself. And then allow him to redirect your footsteps, to redirect your path, to take you from that place, that safe place, that secure place of Emmaus, to that place, a risky place, a dangerous place, a place of Jerusalem, the place where we will witness, where we will speak of the risen Lord Jesus. So let me just lead you in a prayer that I found this morning in my devotions and it was written by a lady called Rachel Adams. Let me use it to finish our time together. I come to you God and I place before you my dreams, my hurts and fears, my failures and my doubts. I lay them down at your feet where I know they are held. It may look foolish to the world. It may not make much sense. But I know the bigger story and I know what is to come. In this world of fear, I choose hope. In this world of exclusion, I choose love. 
In this world of distraction, I choose you. Remind me of your truth, Lord, especially in the waiting. When times are hard and I'm struggling to hear your voice, fill me afresh with your presence. Remind me of your great plan. And let the, let the truth sink in that I need only you. Amen. And finally, a prayer taken from Ephesians chapter 1. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope in which he called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparable power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms. Amen.